we're here with uh, Ms. Batsana. Uh, she's the owner of Koala Kalachi here in Cyprus. Uh, so we're just gonna get to know her a little bit better. Um, so Batsana, what made you decide to open this business? I, I wasn't, I don't cook or bake, never did when I was a kid. I'm not that great story of, you know, oh, she was baking a cake since two, you know? It, that's not my story, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to disappoint a lot of you guys out there, but no, um, it was, it kind of just fell into my lap. Like, so I was living in LA and I just sold my last company and uh, my family, like my brother and sister lives in Houston, so I have family and friends here. And so like, I would come visit, but I was spending like a weekend and that's it. Well, this time I had time to spend because I just sold my last company, didn't know what to do. So I just took a break, you know, wanted to travel a little bit, do here and there. I didn't, like, like I didn't do that before. So I came home, I kind of call this home now because I'm so used to like, right. like I've been here for like four or five, like it's home, you know right, what I mean? Right. So I came home um, and um, I noticed that every donut shop, like literally, had this thing called kolache. Then I didn't know what it was called. I just wanted a donut because in LA, donut shop only has donuts and coffee, nothing else, right? So I'm gonna get a donut. And so then I walk in and like I see like you know a small display of donuts, but then like I'm, but then like I see like equal display of these things. Right. I'm like, that's not a donut, right? Like right. donut is dough, glaze, sweet. That's not sweet. And of course, carry off. I'm like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's a kolache. Oh, what's a kolache? Me? Oh, okay, well, can I have one? Sure. Took a bite, holy crap. Like, I <laughs> fell in love. And I asked the guy, so does every, like, donut shop has these things? He's like, oh yeah, every shop. I go, oh, really? Okay. So, next day, I went to another shop. Same thing. Yeah. Donuts and then half equally kolache. I'm like, yeah. And I started tasting it, and I mean, I, I loved it. They all, it's the same. So I, then I got home, I Google kolache, and I realized, holy crap, it's like a whole new world out there. So I literally went to, then the third day, I literally went to like a hundred shops. I traveled all in Texas just to like taste kolache. Like, I literally fell in love. And as I was like traveling and doing my like, I guess R and D, I discovered fruit kolache. Oh, exactly. Oh. Trust me. I was like, wait, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, it's a kolache. I go, then what is that? They go, oh, it's a kabochnik. I'm like, wait, what? Got confused. Did a little research. Realized in Texas they call everything kolache, rather than sweet or savory. Okay, but. What I learned going through West Texas is that kolache is actually the fruit ones, which is like the sweet, mm, okay. savory one, like the sweet ones. And then the sauce and cheese is called kabachne. Did you know that? I had no idea. Okay, well, no I didn't either until like I started doing research. I'm like, oh, okay. But then, you know, in Texas, we just call it kolache to make it simple, like to make it simpler. So now right. we call it sweet and savory kolache, which makes sense. You know what I mean? Kolache does sound better. Kolache, mm. kabachne. kabachne. It kind of doesn't roll off the tongue, so I completely get it. But so yeah, and I started experimenting, and voila, here we go. <laughs> Four years later, <laughs> and believe it or not, I do eat a kolache a day, maybe three a day. <laughs> My staff will tell you. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I just love. I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I just love it. Yeah. And, and then I noticed, like, people do the exact same thing, like just toss it in cheese. Right. Basically, it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, like. They're there's, missing there's out. So many. Exactly. Dude, you're missing out. To me, a kolache is like a dinner roll. Yeah. You know how when you have like like you know when you go to restaurants and mm -hmm. give you bread? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like dipping bread and everything. Like that's me, right? I'm that girl that's like breaking pieces of rolls and dipping it in mashed potatoes, like all these sauces and like, you know, I'm that girl just dips, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm a dipper, okay? So I'm thinking, oh my god, there's so many things you can do with this. Like it's like a croissant. Yeah. I mean, to me, I call it the step type of croissant. Yeah, yeah. Because it came from Europe, so it's Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. I feel like the croissant kind of like overpower the pastry world, and it became this big old thing. And croissant, you could do sweet and savory. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same thing. Yeah, I was kind of blown away with the old kolache thing when I moved to Texas too. I was like, what is this? A hot pocket? Like, I know. I was like, is that a pig in a blanket? Right. <laughs> 
Like, what is this? I know, what is it? And then, I don't know, but yeah, so that's, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I know. So how exactly did you get started? Like once you did all the research and all of that, so how did you actually get started with this business? Okay, so I, I'm i very extreme. Yeah. Like my friends would tell you. Yeah. I'm in it, I'm all or nothing. Even my personality. Like I don't do things halfway. I, I just don't. Um, so when I, I got intrigued, I started doing some research and I realized, you know, then in LA, like, you know, food is always like, becomes trendier and it follows down, right? So LA, like this gourmet donuts was already a big hit. So I knew it was gonna eventually come to Houston and it was already getting there already. So since I know that people are focusing on donuts in, in Texas, I was like, well, let me focus on something that no one's really focusing on. Right. Right? Cause I mean, remember I'm, or entrepreneur of mine, right? right. I'm like, and plus, it's better than donuts anyways. I'm not a really sweet person. So for me, I'm like, no brainer. Like, let, 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 let me just do it. So I just started like, you know, looking for a recipe, playing with it, didn't like any of it. And then I called my friend who's actually Czech. I was like, hey, ask your grandma a recipe for kolache. She freaked out like, wait, you know what a kolache is? I'm like, girl, I just discovered it. <laughs> I said, can you please ask her? I'm pretty sure she has one. Holy be God, she had one. She said, emailed it to me and I experimented it and it was probably the best recipe that I have found, which I probably would have found it on the internet to be honest with you, because yeah. it wasn't internet capability of that recipe. So yeah, I just experimented and then like, I don't know, to start playing with it. And I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. And I dive right in and I, uh, bought a small donut shop at our old location on 529. Okay. And I just rebranded it and redecorated it and kind of, that first recipe that we used at that location wasn't like authentically true. Mm -hmm. You know, it was what I know, which was like pre-made, pre-mixed kind of package because it was like the easiest I can find right at the moment. But then as I got into it, I developed my own recipe and here we are. Like I said, I'm very compulsive. Like I yeah. want to be the best yeah. in everything I do. And I, I, yeah, I just spend days and yeah, it, 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 everything. Like, you know, the best that I can with what I have. Yeah. But I, I just, I just love kolache. I don't know what it is. Like I just, I don't know. And it wasn't being monetized. It wasn't marketed. It was, it was a wide open market. Even now, it's only literally a Texas thing. You yeah. realize that, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm from California. And when I tell my friend, they're like, what are you doing in Texas? I'm like, I'm opening a kolache. I, well, I was letting them know I was opening a kolache shop. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what's a kolache? What's I go, trust me, I asked the same damn question when I first found out. So, and then even now, after doing it four years, I realized it's only a Texas thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah. So. I know you mentioned that you do, I mean, when you do something, you do it 100%. But what, what drives that? What motivates you? Okay. Besides, of course, everyone has their story, right? Like, everyone has their soft story, da da da. Literally go through that, right? Um, I think, well, I do have to say it is my life experience that drives me, that makes me want to be motivated. Um, I, but I think it's my DNA. Like, I'm just extreme. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I, I don't know any other way. And I guess it has to do with my life experience. Because in my life experience, I had to be extreme. You know, and not because, not for survival or anything, but I don't know. It's it's been it's been in me. Yeah. I've always wanted the best. I've always wanted to be better. Like even in schools, in elementary school, and then we would in PE we would do like jump rope contests. Like who can jump rope the longest? I'm like I'm doing this. Like it didn't matter what it was. I just wanted to to test my ability to be the best me that I can be. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like in anything, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be like a simple like. You know, who could hold water the longest in their mouth? Like, I'm all about it. You know, <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. It's just, I just want to test my limit. It's a combination of your DNA, your life experience, and how you see things, mm -hmm. like your perception. You know, because your perception of the world changes who you really are, and also your surrounding, too. So it's a lot of combination of things, I guess. So, what is something that uh, most people don't know about your business? That I'm a single mom. Okay. I don't think anyone knows. I mean, my regular knows I have a kid. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that 90% of the population doesn't know that I'm a single mom. 
I don't try to use it as a marketing tool right. because that doesn't make me less. I don't need your sympathy. Right. <laughs> that doesn't make me, you know, like I don't need to be like, oh my gosh, just want my support or no. I want you to support Koala because you believe in our product and what we do. Not because I'm feeding you a sad story. That's not my narrative. And if anyone tells you it's so easy or they make it look easy on Instagram or Facebook, they're lying to you. I mean, it's it's very it's a mental and physical challenging thing to do. And it's very selfless. It's always one has to sacrifice for the other. And it's kind of like up to you, not to say what's your priority, because my son is my priority. But at the end of the day, my priority is to provide a good living, a good, to cultivate him. And how do I cultivate him? It's first not to be homeless. First not, not to go back, back to that environment where I came from when I was growing up. You know what I mean? Like, again, just back to life experience. So people don't get that. So yeah, I might be neglecting my child in some sense to focus more on my business, but it's because I'm selfless that I don't want him to go through what I went through as a kid. Absolutely. Drives me that way. So what uh, what would your customers say they love most about your business? I'm hoping the product is one of them. <laughs> but I think it's that sense of joy that we bring to them. Oh. <laughs> that it's the sense of joy, that, that environment that we can bring to them in the morning, especially because as you know, a bakery is a morning, yeah. morning time thing, and um, I don't think people realize how important morning really is. Like, I, I mean, morning routine is important, right? But I don't think people realize how important it is to set some about the morning because it actually makes or break their day. Right. And me being a morning person, you know, and I'm just, again, extreme, you know. So um, I realize that it is so important that since we are in the morning industry, that we need to be a morning person. Mm -hmm. Because being a morning person, again, we can impact someone's life, you know, when they do come in to our space. We call this our space, right? And every person that you do interact with as a morning routine affects you. So an example, example, you wake up, right, not no thought. Let's just say you wake up the kids screaming, oh my God, right, shut up, right? right? And then you'd be wife nagging, oh my God, what's going on? You're trying to get your coffee and you're already agitated because this, the kid starts screaming this morning, the wife is nagging you, and then you spill coffee on you. Do you see what I mean? It kind of trickles, right? Yeah. And again, I don't know what it's going through in the morning. But all I know and all I care about, or all we care about, is when you walk through that door, we're going to try to sprinkle joy at you as much as you can. And maybe you can walk out of here with a little more joyful or better attitude towards your day. And maybe the day will be better. You know, we don't know anyone's going through. And I feel like, yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I, I love, I'm a morning person. I just, I love it for the morning. Yeah. And I wanna, and for me, like, you know, me knowing that how my morning, how the morning sets my day, I'm very like particular what I do in the morning to set my day off. And I don't have that luxury, I don't have that choice, right? So when they come to us, I wanna be that choice. Uh, that, make, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you, just like you said, if, if you know, you wake up, the kids streaming, and, and you got a lot of stuff going on, that kind of sets the tone for the rest of your day. Yes. But if you wake up in the morning, birds chirping, and you just, yes. you know, that sets the tone for your day as well. Exactly. Yeah. And and we, like I said, we don't just serve kolaches and cinnamons, right? Which it is joy in its own. But we want to really, we want to, like I said, be that environment for joy. So when you know, you know, I'm having a bad day. I want to go to Koala. They make me happy. They bring joy to me. Right. You know, and that's what we want. Um, so what are some odd requests you've gotten from your customers? Like, what's the most, mm -hmm. the weirdest thing, weirdest order? <laughs> I mean, God, I love my customers. They are amazing. And they know I'm very creative. So when they come with ideas, I'm all about it. Right? One that we did that I actually love was, um, so we have a customer of ours, she had brain cancer. Um, and she's, um, she went through sort of, well, I think it's like a, her second time around. I, I don't quite, know, I don't want to, don't correct, don't quote me, but I know she's going through brain cancer and she had sort of, she's going through her you know, process. And uh, this is so sweet though. And uh, she wanted 
to give adopted nurses that took care of her seminoles of ours, and she wanted us to do a brain frosting, which is kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of difficult if you think about it, because it's is flat and her brain is kind of not. Mm -hmm. So that was, to me, not like the weirdest, right. kind of, but not really, but it was more touching and, and more, uh, I had to master it yeah. because it was, it was so meaningful to her to give those to her caretaker that I felt like I could fail her. I mean, it took about five hours to try, but we managed to do it, but yeah. Not the weirdest, but it was the coolest yeah. request that we probably had. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we could do. No, don't get ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty cool. It was like a frosty little bit of rain. That's awesome. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Why do you think it's important for people to shop local? Oh, oh my God, it's so easy. First of all, it's literally seventy-five percent of small businesses employ people, whether you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is very important. But besides that, I mean, I feel like we should support each other on that level, Absolutely. right? I mean, I'm not knocking like the big corporation because they did what they need to do to get to where they need to yeah. be. I don't knock anyone's success. Okay, that's not my, what I'm doing here. But I feel like, you know, there's always that great feeling story of like a small mom and pop that's made it successful, like Chipotle. Yeah. It's a good example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. McDonald's, it's a great example, right? Like they, the small businesses start somewhere. But now look, McDonald's employed maybe the most, the, I guess the biggest growing franchise, I think, in the Sounds industry. Sounds about right. I mean, I don't know, don't quote me. <laughs> I don't watch the news or anything like that. But you know, and like they employ so many people and look at Chipotle and I mean, they all start from somewhere before mm -hmm. they became big, right? And it's because they got the community, you know, they were driven by the community, they were supported by the community. And that's why I think it's so important because you don't know what this mom and pop can actually become, yeah. right? And if you believe the CEO, the owner, the vision, whatever, is, you know, they might be able to do great things in the world, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, you know, Chipotle does amazing things. I, I don't know much about Chipotle, but I do know that, you know, they pay their customers, they pay their employees very well. Mm -hmm. And that's so important to me, right? Um, they get health insurance, even part-time. So things like that, like you don't know what one small pop can become right. and how they can like, impact the world, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, so that's why I think it's so important to support your local, besides the fact that they basically employ 30% of America, but besides that, but yeah, like they can do wonders. And most of mom and pop, they don't really forget where they came from. Yeah. They don't really forget the community, what they've done for them and the people. And it's kind of beautiful that way. Well, guys, if you're in, in need of a, a kolache um, with, with what, brain icing or whatever type of icing that you want. No. Don't <laughs> be advertising that. I'm going to have you in the kitchen with me. It's an apron, okay? <laughs>